Electric charge was defined by uh, someone named Coulomb, uh, a French scientist, a few hundred years ago. So um, he described uh, uh, electrical field strength as being measurable by uh, taking the charges of two objects and multiplying by a constant and then dividing by, well, it's R squared sort of thing, but that's for electrical field strength. And yet, for, we can take Coulomb's law and we can turn it into something where we can understand lattice energy a little bit better. Now, this is kind of cool. I, I think this is really neat. Um, the lattice energy, that, that number, remember that we were just talking about where when those ions come together and form those ionic crystals, that's the amount of energy that's released. Well, you can actually describe how much relatively that, that, that energy is going to be uh, coming off um, uh, from di for different compounds by just looking and considering this formula here. And really, you don't have to worry about the K because it's a constant. So it's really Q and Q, which are actually the ionic charges, the positive and negative charges, the cation and anion charges in the ionic crystal. So, and by the way, the R is going to have something to do with that too, but for first glance in being able to determine which chemical, and by the way, this is the type of question you could be asked, which compound has the greatest lattice energy, or which one releases the most energy when the lattice or the crystal is formed? So, you could be asked, which one of these three has the greatest lattice energy? And really, it's as simple as this. You look at the chemical and you go, that's a positive one and a negative one, because those are the charges of those two ions on the periodic table. And they would go in here. So whatever the lattice energy is here, what, what it's going to um, uh, equal to here, um, it's actually based on what those charges are to a large part. And that's a one and a one. Look at this one. This is a 2 positive and 2 negative on the periodic table, which means that would be 2 and 2. Multiply those two together, and if these are relatively close to one another, now then the radius isn't going to be, but I'll talk about that in a second. What you can do is, you can say, well, man, if that's 1 times 1 is 1, and this is 2 times 2, which is 4, the lattice energy of MgO might be 4 times as great as the NaCl, and it pretty much is. That's pretty cool. And look at this one. This is 2 three positive charges and three two negative charges because those are the two charges of those two chemicals on the periodic table. Hey, that's going to be what? That's a two positive and a three positive. That's six. So that's going to be six times greater than the NaCl and it kind of is. That's really neat. Now, that's how you differentiate between things that have different uh, uh, charges between themselves. Now, it definitely in, in international baccalaureate IB chemistry and AP chem, you also have to kind of be able to figure out when somebody says, hey, which one's got the greatest lattice energy, NaCl or LiCl? And then you go, mm. look, it's the same. It's NaCl, one positive and one negative, and it's the same here, positive one, negative one. Right. So when you can't tell based on the Qs here, which are the charges of the ions, go to the R, which is radius. Okay, now, think about it. Just think about it. These two atoms being identical here between the two, the two anions, gives us a comparison here, and a nice comparison, between the Li and the Na, and that's all it's ever going to be. Two of the, when they say something like this, compare these two together and they both have equal charges, two of the elements are just going to be the same. So you can do this. Sodium on the periodic table, element number 11, but lithium, not element number 11, element number 3. So here's the deal. Which one of these two ions is larger? Well, you know, ion charges, well, just atom charges are going to increase going down the periodic table. Well, actually, so are the sizes of the ions as well. So here's the deal. Sodium is a larger ion. Lithium is smaller. And that means this, that the bond length between Li and Cl is going to be shorter and they're going to be closer together, the Li and the Cl, than the Na and the Cl, where, where Na is a bigger atom, and the two atoms are going to be able to not get as close to one another because repulsions are going to start to take over because there's a lot of electrons here in the 1s, 2s, and 2p orbitals, but this only has 1s and 2s. And so the electrons here are not going to be repelled as much by, uh, right away, and you can get them closer together. If you get the elements closer together, this radius is actually the 
kind of like the bond length, right? It's the radius of the, of the atoms or the, or the molecule itself. And the deal is, the radius here is going to be shorter. A smaller number here makes this value larger because it's in the denominator, smaller denominator. If the denominator was larger, it would make this number small. And this one's going to have a larger, so it's going to be smaller. Lithium chloride is going to have a greater lattice energy than sodium chloride because they might be positive one, negative one, both, but the radius here is smaller. And that's how you do that. Uh, by the way, when you go across the periodic table, whoop, you go across the periodic table this way, like I just said, the, the size of ions is going to increase going down, just like the size of atoms do, but going across. Think about it. If you've got Na positive, and then next to the Na positive, of course, on the periodic table, you've got Mg2 positive as ions, right? They have the same number of electrons. When this one, magnesium, loses two, po two electrons and sodium loses one, they both have ten electrons, but magnesium has more protons. So the electrons are attracted more to the nucleus, and what I'm saying is this. Ion size then, going across, the trend is that they actually get smaller. For metallic ions, they get smaller as you go across. By the way, then you start to add electrons to make ions in the nonmetals. And then going across a period then, the ion sizes get smaller and then they get large again as we get to the noble gases. Just to tell you some relative sizes of ions.